immediate changes you're going to have to make as a realtor in how you speak and how you deal with clients and how you operate in the real estate world post NAR settlement August 17th, 2024. This whole settlement and issue changed the landscape. You guys already know my opinions on it. You can refer to some of the other videos that I made, such as we were lied to about it. But here, I want to make a video specifically outlining what you need to do, things that you need to change and tweak in order to make sure that you're in compliance, but that you move forward correctly, okay? Let's start with this. One, you guys may have noticed already in your local areas that the MLS, that your local board right will not allow you even if you input stuff in the computer to try to bypass the co-broker selling office compensation right any type of terminology or indication or words that refer to that it'll block you from posting it or adding it in the description i know some of this stuff may differ state to state but you're already going to notice that they put a block on it meaning you can't make any references there in the description on the MLS side, what you're showing to the agents in regards to what you're going to offer or if you're going to offer, right? I think the closest thing you're going to be able to put is, hey, give me a call uh, to show the home or something like that, right? So immediately from a descriptive standpoint, you guys have to make the adjustments because remember, this can have consequences and repercussions down the line. Depending on, again, what state that you're in, you may be okay putting certain things on your website. Uh, you know, when you look at the IDX and your own personal website, your company website or whatever it is, or if you make individualized websites for your listings, you may be able to put a compensation on there, right? Um, again, I'm going to ask you to refer specifically to your state because there could be some different rules there, right? Because I know some states are complying with this whole change and I think like Colorado and some other states aren't and they're saying, no, we're not going to comply. So do your due diligence, but be very careful with that because I've had... And this is all it takes, guys. All it takes is one hater or one nosy person to get you in trouble. I've had people go to like old Facebook pages that I don't even have access to because I've had them deleted and try to point out certain things that were posted on my social media saying that I'm not in compliance. And they would go rat me out to like my local board or the state. And I've gotten, you know, in trouble because of that in the past. Now, some of you out there, most of you out there aren't going to have haters like I have that are like, you know, looking at every nook and cranny, right? But we can call that a technicality where technically maybe something I did was slightly out of compliance. But if you look at the majority of realtors, everybody is out of compliance at some level, especially when we talk social media and these descriptions. So you want to be absolutely certain post this that you are in compliance because there's gonna be a lot more people looking and it's gonna be a lot more easier for you to get in trouble because a lot of the lingo and things have changed around compensation. So make sure that from a linguistic standpoint, you specifically say buyer's agent commission or something of that sort, right? That way people know you're in compliance on your websites and you can't get in trouble because that's the biggest thing when it comes to this type of stuff is you don't wanna get a slap on the wrist right? Or your license suspended or something like that over something silly, right? So from an adjustment in your linguistics, but also what you put on your website and your descriptions, you're going to have to make that change. Okay. Number two, when you meet with sellers and you meet with clients, you're going to have to be very clear in how you spell out this process and how you describe it to them. Because now when it comes to a listing, I know depending again, what state you're in, but at least the forms that I used in California and Florida, there was always a distinction there where it showed what my fee would be and then what we would offer people, right? But you're going to have a lot of people now, sellers, uh, buyers, and a lot of individuals who are going to be unsure about what happened in the settlement and they may ask you for an explanation. So you want to be in the position of understanding and knowing what you're talking about. So as an example, if you sit down with the seller, you're going to have to tell them, Hey, we're either going to charge the commission to just me and then it's going to be up to me to do this thing or we can do it the traditional way where we're now going to be offering a buyer's agent commission and exposing your home to all the other agents with their buyers, right? Now, how you guys go about doing that is up to you. I obviously as an agent, a seasoned agent would recommend that you still offer a buyer's agent commission because with the amount of agents out there on the market with all the buyers, it's going to benefit your seller. Sure, if you do a dual agency, you'll make more money and I could see potentially a lot of greedy agents recommending to sellers, hey, just pay my fee and we'll figure out the rest. But in the end, it's about the client, it's about your seller and getting them the most money. And in most cases, you'll make less money doing that by offering a commission to a buyer's agent. But at the same time, it benefits them. It gives the house more exposure, generally speaking, right, to more potential buyers, which will get a more interest, potentially more offers and more money. And that's ultimately what we want to do right by our sellers, 
right? So again, make sure that you guys are in compliance with what you're saying in regards to those conversations. Make sure you make a clear distinction there. Now, let's go over to the buyers. When you guys talk to the buyers, remember now, um, again, regardless of what state you're in, you're gonna have to have some sort of agreement signed with your buyer. Now, for many of you, this is a shock because although people like me have been screaming to you to do uh, buyer's agent consultations and getting people to sign an agreement for the last decade, right? Now it's a requirement. So be smart, right? I know that uh, with the forms, again, depending on what state that you're in, there's gonna be some flexibility there. You won't have to lock somebody in for, for 30 days or 45 days. Get creative and say, hey, let's you know, take a look at you know, two or three homes, and if it works out, we'll sign for these, and then we'll have a discussion after that to see if we're a good fit for each other, to see if we wanna work longer than that, assuming we don't find your house. Cool? So get somebody to sign a one-time, a two-time, a three-time showing agreement right? Establish your value with them, do the consultation, right? Show them how you work, and then you can sign one uh, that will last longer. Now, again, depending on your state, you should have that flexibility unless there's some states out there that don't allow you to do that, and it's a set time frame of permanent or 30 days or whatever it is, right? But figure it out because that's really what it's going to come down to now for the agents who are going to do well. It's the people who can adapt, right? For me, it's a, it's a less of an adjustment for me and my team because we've always been doing this, but for some of you who have never, ever gotten a buyer agency agreement and you've never met with somebody before showing them homes and actually spelling out the process to them and, and following that whole methodology, you need to make sure that you, know, you become well-versed in it, you get trained in it, and that you can deliver that. Because that's ultimately the professional process that people are looking for that you can establish and use that's going to get you many clients, keep them loyal, get them the result, and ultimately keep you in this business. Right? Because now in, in the wake of this, I've had a huge influx of people coming to me and this is kind of the next point, is many of you need to get real bona fide sales systems, support, coaching and training to be a real bona fide professional. I've had floods of people coming to me lately and I'm sure they're going to other coaches as well because you guys really need this stuff. It's time for you to step up because if there's one recommendation I make tied to this point is you need to be a consummate professional now. You need to have a professional process. You need to carry yourself a certain way and run your business a certain way. We can't have this lackadaisical TikTok social media type of thing where you just sit at home and your flip flops. Many of you are gonna have to get a Regis office space, some sort of office space, some sort of legitimacy to your business. Because this is the question I always pose to people, right? If your client got a video feed of you during a workday for 24 hours, would they fire you or would they be proud of how you're working? Because for many of you, if you answer that question honestly, and you can leave a comment, they would fire you. Because I know, I've talked to many of you. You don't even get up on time, you don't follow a schedule, you don't have any semblance of, of being a real business person, right? And this type of stuff, is the shock that people need to really step up and say, okay, am I running a legitimate business here or am I just putting on a front for IG or YouTube or whatever it is? And do you, do you take pride in that? Because that's tied to this point too. The people who are studying their craft, becoming a better salesperson, studying the market, knowing their stuff to better serve their clients, staying up to date on what's going on, those are the people that really care. Those are the people that are the true business people. Everyone else who's just trying to do the bare minimum and make a lot of money, you guys need to leave because a lot of you that are doing that are giving us a bad name. I fight for realtors all the time. And a lot of times when I meet people out, they're like, oh, wow, you're a realtor? Like the bar is so low, the way that I carry myself and my professionalism blows people away to the point where they're like, wait, this guy's in real estate? I thought all realtors were used car salesmen or whatever it is. And it's sad and it's up to us to kind of change that. There's gonna be a subsect of the population that's always gonna hate us, that's fine. Look at my comment section on my reels um, here on YouTube and Instagram and you'll see it. There's a bunch of trolls. Oh, realtors aren't worth shit, whatever. I'm not talking about them. They were always against us. I'm talking about the people who have had experience or look at realtors and say, man, these guys are lazy or they have a cousin who doesn't do anything and sits at home all day and says he's a realtor, right? They have no professional process, no systems, no office space, right? I mean, even if you're gonna say, well, I can't afford an office space, cool. At least have an office space in your house that's, that's neat and professional and presentable. That way, if we did a video of it, it at least looks like a legitimate work, workplace and a workstation. Let's, let, let, let's raise that standard, right? So we have some of the lingo. We have the buyers and sellers. We have getting the coaching and training and making sure that you're, you're really, truly being the manifestation of what a professional is, right? And, and these are some of the things in the beginning, right? Next, 
how you deal with other agents now is going to change, right? If you're a listing agent, now you're going to receive even more work because you have an influx of people asking, Hey, are you offering a, a commission? So there's a couple of things I want to comment about this. Number one, of course, I'm going to push for you to, to offer that and secure that from your seller. Let's say you don't, if you don't be clear about it and be stern or tell people, Hey, you know what? Write up an offer and write it into your offer, right? Make that recommendation to them because we have to get savvier as agents to put these deals together. There's many out of the box ways to put these deals together, either from the buyer side or the seller side. So let me just run some scenarios for you. You can always submit if I'm the buyer's agent and they're refusing to pay, I could write such a good offer that either it's full asking price with great terms or maybe slightly above their price. I add a little bit more to make, and then I can ask for my commission as well to then have the seller pay for it after. It's not offered up front, it's written into the offer. Same thing on the back end. There's ways for you with your lender to structure ways where they either add it into the loan, right? Depending on your area and, and who you're working with, to structure the loan in a way where it won't necessarily just come out of the buyer's pocket to have your compensation paid for and they continue moving forward with the home and the regular loan process, right? This is where we have to get more creative as agents and make sure that we're thinking outside of the box and finding a solution. Because imagine if you're me, right? And I'm the listing agent and a buyer's agent comes who we're having a dispute about the, the commission, but they have a great client who would probably pay the most for this house. Well, we need to figure it out. If they love the house and they want it and us getting in the way by having the stupid dispute about the commission or something that has nothing to do with the buyer buying and the seller selling is silly. And we need to start getting more creative and being more collaborative with each other. We at a lot of times are combative with each other as agents and we need to stop that, right? Because what's tied with that too, I want to add it is if you're a listing agent or a buyer's agent, be professional. I've lost count of how many times people come at me sideways or give an attitude and give me the whole, well, I've been in the business 30 years. Look, nobody gives a shit, right? Be professional with each other. I've had people blow up on me and then apologize later. Oh, I'm going through a divorce. I'm sorry. That's fine. I empathize with that. However, it has nothing to do with our situation. Don't take out your emotions on me. So it's up to us to uphold that standard, right? So not only do we need to collaborate with each other more, you all need to be more respectful with each other. It's crazy because as time goes on and there's less agents who are transacting, odds are you're going to come back around and transact with that agent again. Now imagine if I'm a listing agent and I already had a sour experience with your poor attitude or your lack of professionalism before, what do you think I'm going to tell my seller if you submit an offer? Hey, just so you know, I've, I've talked and worked with this agent before, very unprofessional, bad communication, and they're, they're going to complicate the transaction because it's true. What are the odds that the seller is going to take your offer or take it as serious? It's going to be less. And that was your fault because of your lack of professionalism and not putting your best foot forward. Same thing with putting your heads together with the agents and saying, Hey, we're here. You're here. How can we get this thing to work? Cause a lot of times when you guys negotiate, you try to play hardball. Well, this is all we're going to do, or we're going to pull out. And that's cool. If you want to use that as a tactic, but if we're at a point where there's a stall or the negotiation isn't getting anywhere, y'all need to put your heads together and figure it out. Now I'm not saying you recommend dropping your commission or any of that. Cause I don't do that. Nor would I recommend any of you ever do that. I did that once in my career. And it was like a one in a million type of situation where I said, okay, I'll reduce my commission to make the deal happen. Right. But I would never recommend you guys do that ever because to me, that's a cop out. If you can't negotiate, you throw in your money. And once you do that, like cutting your commission in the beginning, when you guys get take listings or get buyers or to close the deals, once you open that door, they're going to keep asking for more and you never want to do that. Because if there's any point again, that I want to add to this one, it's stay true to your value. If you know you're putting in the work and you're valuable, you don't have to prove it to anybody, but stand firm on your commission. My team members, myself, my team, we still get listings at six and 7% and that's not stopping anytime soon. I've had new agents come into my team and take listings at 7%. I have coaching members right now who are taking two, three, four, five, six listings a month. He's still getting them at 6% with no signs of slowing down. Hold true, hold the line. Almost like the Spartans, hold the line, hold. Otherwise you're either going to be in that category or you're going to be with everybody else. 
chasing you know the last penny and then getting in the battle of who's the cheapest if you want to play that game go for it you want to be walmart you want to just offer the 500 dollars fee you can find those everywhere and you're just going to be this constant battle where you don't bring any value or you don't have any distinction and there's nothing that makes you uh, distinguishable and you're just like you know what i have nothing else to offer i'll just drop my fee because that's really what it comes down to people drop their fees y'all because they have no other value no other offer to give except for their only differentiator is well i'm cheaper think about it this way guys if we're, if we're going to go logical for a second right for sell by owner has been out for eons right all these services online all these discount brokerages right why is it that the lion's share of real estate is still being sold by regular commission brokers and agents the internet's been out for over 20 years. The discount model has been out for a long time, right? Fizbo's have been going on for a long time. Why are we still 90 plus percent of all the sales that are happening in spite of all of that over the years? Because what we do brings value and it works. That's why. And you'll see. If a lot of people stop offering a buyer's agent commission, you're going to see it affect seller's bottom line. Quote me on that. Will, will it still happen? Of course. But in mass, if it starts happening where half or more of the listings don't offer buyer's agent compensation, they're going to start feeling it because agents and buyers are going to go somewhere else. And when their bottom line starts getting affected, guess what? They're going to have to tweak their strategy. But we have a responsibility as agents to put homes on the market at a fair commission and at the right price. If you want to alleviate a lot of this stuff, guys, get a full commission on listings and list it at the right price. Don't come here and tell me, well, the seller wanted that. It doesn't matter what they want. We have to price it at where the market is at. That's independent of what we want or what they want. And it's up to you as a professional to get them to agree. And if they're unwilling and they're not motivated, pass. Because if every realtor passed and didn't just cave in to get the listing, because that's self-serving if they do that. If every realtor passed and then sellers realize, man, I can only put my home on the market being realistic, guess what would happen? A lot of these issues that we have would go away. Because now that overpriced listing that gets the market value offer, suddenly, well, it's a low ball. It's not a low ball. That's market value. But you guys overpricing the listing and putting it on the market, you're stalling the market. And you're stopping the buyer from buying. Because you have an unmotivated seller or a greedy seller. Now, to a degree, that's their fault. But it's also on us as agents. We have a responsibility to put them on for a fair commission and the right price. If we did that in mass, a lot of the issues that we have in real estate would disappear. Think about how many expired listings there are. Think about our reputation, right? All, a lot of those things, maybe not all the problems, but a lot of them would disappear if we started pricing homes properly and doing things as we're supposed to as agents. But the excuse is, well, the next guy's going to take it. Well, if we all think that way, then nothing's ever going to change. How about you step up and you hold the standard like me? You know how many listings I've walked away from and my team has walked away from a ton. And the next bozo will come and over, overprice it. But I stand on principle. I stand on business. I stand on doing the right thing. And if that started happening in mass, we would see the change. But you can't just pass it on and say, well, I'm not going to do it because no one else will do it. That's stupid. Society and the world would crumble if that was the mentality. So y'all need to start working together, raise the standard, and start doing a lot of these things in order to improve. If we really want longevity in this industry and to do well. Because all that's going to happen with these changes post-August 17, 2024 is... The people who are already dominating are going to get more of the pie. And the people who are struggling, right, that number is going to increase. So 80-20 is going to become 10-90. That's it. We're still going to transact. We're still going to be making money. We're still going to get listings. It's going to be the same old thing with a few, with a few tweaks. That, that's my prediction, long term. Is this going to help the consumer? Eh, maybe, maybe not. I don't think it will. Really, I think the way that they did it, they went about it the wrong way. And I think that the adjustments and things that they did were um, erroneous. I think, you know, the settlement got those buyers, what, like $38 each or something like that. And the lawyers made hundreds of millions of dollars. That to me is pretty obvious that <laughs> there's an issue with that. Uh, but overall, I think that as agents, you're just going to have to really make sure that you do things properly and make the adjustments and roll with the punches because there's always going to be changes in technology and things being introduced. Look at how the brokerage model has changed. Look at how this has changed, 
right? Look at how technology has come in, right? Like the internet and the introduction of the multiple listing service online versus, you know, it having the books being, you know, in the books, all this stuff has changed, right? The local agent, right? Back in the day, people could only take a listing to an office and only that office and their agents can sell it. Now it's much more regional, right? So there's been a lot of changes and a lot of things that will continue to change in the industry. It's up to you to, t- to stay a step ahead and make sure that you're doing business properly. Because if you do business properly, you will be independent of all these disruptors and you will always have a strong foundation and a good business, okay? That's it for this one, guys. Those of you looking for extra help, I do one-on-one Zoom consultations. It's in the description on my website. I also offer courses on a bunch of stuff. I do coaching and training as well. For those of you interested, hit me up or check out the links in the description to my website. If you want to talk to me about joining Real Brokerage, we can have that conversation as well. I've been bringing over a ton of people. Anything else you need, hit me up. Leave a comment below. Smash that like button and we'll see you on the next video. All right, peace.